from the home of Buckingham Palace. It's the Tom Likas Show. I've suffered the tortures of the damned, sir. Tortures of the damned. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. We're in London. And we are here through the good graces of the Los Angeles Kings hockey team of the National Hockey League. National Hockey League with a big historic weekend. Uh, the, The very first games played in Europe of the National Hockey League. Oh, there have been uh, exhibition games. There have been, uh, like, for example, the LA Kings right now are in Salzburg, Australia, playing a couple of uh, games that don't count as preseason tune-ups. That's where they are right now. And there have been three games played in Japan. But the NHL, with all the European players they have, have never played a game in Europe, ever. Never played one that counted, and this weekend they're playing two. So we are here with the Los Angeles Kings. They brought us here, and the Los Angeles Kings will play the Stanley Cup champion Anaheim Ducks twice this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Now, I'm hoping you'll be here. These games have been sold out for months, I just found out. Months! I have to see who's coming. I just can't imagine who's going to be there. Will it be every Canadian and American expatriate? Will it be people from Finland and Sweden, Russia, Czech Republic? Will it be people from Irvine? Probably all of that. I'm looking forward to it. The games will be available. By the way, if your cable company or your satellite uh, provider uh, has the NHL set of ice package, the games will be on this weekend and will be available for free. Normally, you would have to pay to see these games, but uh, the NHL is having a free preview weekend, and you can watch both games Saturday and Sunday. They are at 5 p.m. London time. That would make them 9 a.m. L.A. time. 11 a.m. Dallas time. And noon Eastern time. You can watch these games, and we'll be at those games. But uh, it's history in the making. Really, it is. And um, it's very exciting for the NHL. And I'm very excited to be here. Very excited to be here. We've been enjoying our time here in London. We've been tasting the brews. Um, We've been uh, getting out and about. Gary got down to Soho today. We have been uh, on the tube. We have been out uh, eating at restaurants. We have been out uh, walking around. Kind of figuring out what's going on. We have had uh, listeners who've been giving us their opinions about uh, what we've been talking about. We've had people who, uh, like this one listener who says your impressions of London, very interesting and entertaining. This is fun to listen to. That's very nice. We had another guy write in to say, And I found this one really, really funny. In fact, I found a lot of these really, really funny. We have another one who wrote in to say the following. Hi, Tom. Great idea coming from London. Really interesting. If you're going to go 6,000 miles to do a show from London, by the way, it's a lot more than that. Give us a London show. Tell us all about your experiences in England. What's different there than here? Your show started great, then drifted into the same show you would do if you were in L.A. interviewing some locals. Interview the Irish in a pub. 
Maybe the show broke down and they're filling the air with old stuff. Don't get me wrong. I love the show and listen every day, but it makes a great change when you report from another country. Let's hear the local news. You don't want to hear the local news here, Tim and Elise Oviejo, California. You don't want to hear the local news. It's not that interesting. If you don't know what's going on in Europe, you're not going to understand what the local news is anyway. The local news. India won the 2020 Cricket Championship. Do you want to know more about that? Oh, yeah, we got all the details. There's a company here that's the equivalent of Countrywide. Looked like they were going broke. Looked like there was going to be a run on the bank. Bank of England came in and rescued them. Just like Bank of America rescued Countrywide Mortgage Company. Same exact story. I mean, what are you waiting to hear? I got something for you. Oh, yes, I got something for you. Do you remember on yesterday's show, we were talking on the air. I said I was going to make a crank call today. And I told you what the crank call was going to be. I said I was going to use one of my old standbys because I'm one of the longest running crank callers in America. I've called every show. I called the Larry King show years ago. You want to know how dated this is? I called the Larry King show and asked him if he preferred. Larry told me he didn't drink coffee. I asked Larry King one time if he preferred uh, what was better than roses on his piano. And Larry said he didn't know. I had to tell him. I mean, the list is long. I'm a long-running crank caller. So I announced on our show yesterday that I was going to call a show here in England. I was going to call up and use my old standby. Uh, You can ruin any talk show with this, by the way, especially on AM radio. If you have a local talk show where one caller is older than the next, all you have to do is call in and say the following. You call and say, "Uh, hello, um, I don't know if anybody's having the same problem I am, but uh, I got a problem with redheads. And I was wondering if any of your listeners would know how to get rid of red ants. I'll hang up and listen. Of course, if you're an old person, the host will be afraid to hang up on you or tell you that's not the topic, which is what he should say. And then that ruins the show entirely. Everybody starts calling him with their red ant stories. So I said I was going to do that today. And I was going to. But it turns out, not only did I not have to, I was completely foiled. All right, we're going to play you a segment right now. Art, do we have that ready? We have five clips from today on London Radio. I'm not making this up. I couldn't make this up. I was going to call in and give my red ant story and was going to have people call in about red ants. How did I know that this would be the topic today? I really don't like cockroaches, particularly those ones. What are them flying cockroach things that look like German helmets? You know those ones? They're, what are they? And what are flying ants as well? I don't like flying ants. They only come one day a year, don't they? There's one day when you're young and they suddenly descend on everything. If I called about red ants, that would be like part of the show. It wouldn't be a crank call. The guy would be thanking me for contributing. By the way. You would think that one comment was it. No, no. No, there was way more where that came from. Mike says, many years ago, I was staying at a friend's house in Tahiti. Yes, I know. It was mainly spent in a hammock, batting away flying cockroaches with a tennis racket. They were so big that they couldn't go through the gaps, fortunately. <laughs> oh. No, I don't, I'm, I'm actually, I'm quite good at infestations, actually. You... <laughs> I'm quite good at infestations, actually. Okay. This is actual radio today. This is talk radio in London today. Have you ever seen a stag beetle? 
They are enormous things. <laughs> Good heavens. Um, Tony says... Yeah, they have lots of parties, don't Tony they? Tony says to me, are you referring to stag beetles, stag parties? They're yeah, great. Thank you. You don't see them much, these. Well, them I have seen, because, but they're an endangered species. And they are, honestly, they're the size of a CG. You don't get them in London, though, do you? You do. You see, apparently London... Well, certainly the fringes of London yeah. is one of their natural habitats, particularly sort of Surrey and areas like that, posh areas. And um, <laughs> we, met, we, did, we did an outside broadcast somewhere one time, and we met a stag beetle man... Springwatch it was, and honestly, this thing was the size of a CD case. Good. It was absolutely enormous. But those are not the ones that fly and look like German Ooh, helmets. What's that, another one? Um, moth. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what about the moths? The stag beetle. Size of a, first it was the size of a CD, then it got bigger. It was the size of a CD case. Oh, my God. God, this is, this is what passes, this, listen to this, this is what passes for talk radio in London. Do you think London's infestations, I can't believe we're having this conversation, infestations are on the increase or the decrease? Oh no, they're undoubtedly on the increase, for all sorts of reasons, I think. Um, preponderance of fast food takeaways yep, yep. is one. Um, the fact that, it's pl that our city is slightly warmer than it was is yep. another, because um, most of these, these creatures like warm places rather piles than Piles of rubbish. Ones. Yep, piles of rubbish. Um... Living in flats rather than houses, because mm. when you've got multiple occupants, it only takes one person to leave a bit of rubbish out, and then they'll go r run all the way through mm. a house. Piles of rubbish? What about this show? There's a lot of piles of rubbish. That's, this is what talk radio sounds You want to talk about piles of rubbish? This is what's on. Because the urban fox breaks into your black rubbish sack outside, right. thus making it easier for the rats to get at the food, oh, you see. see. Then the fleas are attracted to the rats, and then the fleas are attracted to the cats. You see? Cats, yeah. But so, this is one of the problems. You get the cats to stop the rats, but the fleas come on the cats. cats. Yeah, yeah. Then, and then they get into your bedding and oh my stop God. biting you. So here we are. We're Nothing living. has got into my bedding oh. and bit me in a very long time. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> now... You have to understand, this is not just a riff the guy did. Then they, they gave out the phone number. I won't torture you with this. They gave out the phone number, and then people started calling in with their insect and vermin stories. I mean, red ants would have been, you know, kind of mild compared to that. So we have to come up with another crank call. The red ant story just isn't going to work. Some people here were convinced that they were listening to our show on the stream and they decided, hey, insects, good show topic. It's unbelievable. By the way, speaking of which, having nothing to do with England, I have to tell you this story. Do you know I once got somebody fired at a radio station that I wanted to get fired? This is true. There was somebody who had afternoon drive and I wanted the afternoon show. The guy was completely incompetent. But not only was he completely incompetent, he used to come to me for advice on what to do on the air. So one day he came to me and he said to me the following, I'm not making this up. This is actual, 100% true material. The guy who had the shift that I wanted came to me and said, I'm out of ideas. What should I do this afternoon on the air? And I said to him, you know, they're getting the buck of throw now for directory assistance. Why don't you just bring in a copy of the Yellow Pages and tell people that you'll give free directory assistance to anybody who calls in. And the guy says, that's a great idea. Now, I, I thought he was being facetious. I didn't think he meant it, that he was going to, like, do this. So I get in my car, and I'm heading away for the weekend. And it's afternoon drive, and I'm listening to the radio station. And I hear some woman calling up going, I need a plumber. I was wondering if you have a location of a plumber. And he's like, okay, I've got the yellow pages right here. The guy thought I would know what to do, and he took my advice. He was doing directory assistance on the air. Free directory assistance. Call now. Oh, that was his last show. Who do you think replaced him? <laughs> Bob, I know you're out there somewhere. Why you took the bait, I don't know. 
And the rest of my career was history. That was the first show where I ever did Afternoon Drive. It made my career. I just had to talk about that. Anyway, yeah, there are people actually complaining. They're saying, oh, why? You're not talking enough about England. You're not talking enough about it. Now, in case you're just tuning in, I am doing this show from London, England. Now, when you listen, you can't even tell we're doing it from London, England. The technology's gotten so good. People expect to hear rain in the background or Big Ben or something in the background. You know what? Come on. It's the 21st century. I can do this show from my house. In fact, I have. And you didn't even know I did it. You could do the show from anywhere. But I'm telling you, I'm in London. The reason I can tell you I'm in London is because if you check the newspapers or check the Internet, you know the, the National Hockey League is bringing the hockey games here this weekend to London. And I'm here, and I'll attend the games. The Kings brought us here. The Los Angeles Kings brought us to London. They were nice enough to bring us here. We came on the air, and despite people saying we're not talking about England, we're not talking about London, we talked about the currency and how the uh, smaller the coin, the more it's worth (laughs) instead of the other way around. We talked about the subway. We've talked about talk radio in London. We have talked about the food. We've talked about the people. I don't know what we're leaving out. So you may have a question or a comment, or you may have something you'd like us to find out for you, or maybe you think we've uh, had an experience that we have not shared with you. If that's the case, you can call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I didn't mean to disappoint anybody. And by the way, before I, before I say anything else about this, this continues the theme of yesterday. And the guy writing in, God bless you, Ron. You're a great guy. I've met you. I'm not going to say what Ron does for a living because I don't want to embarrass him personally. But remember I said yesterday on the program that people had been calling me at 4.30 in the afternoon London time and saying things like, have you done the show yet? 8.30 a.m. in Los Angeles. Have you done the sh- today show yet? Have you done it yet? No. When are you doing it? 3 p.m. L.A. time. But isn't it a different time over there? Yes. What time are you doing? 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? But isn't your show supposed to be on at 3? Should I tune in at 11? I was getting calls from people I know. This is somebody who I've met, who's a listener, and he writes in the following. This I just got this one today. Hey, Tom, I really do not believe that you are live when I'm listening to you here in Las Vegas. Eight hours behind Greenwich Mean Time. How about some kind of time confirmation that you really are on live in London from 11 p.m. until 4 a.m. London time? Ron, I give out the phone number. And people are calling in. How much more confirmation do you get? What am I, Fidel Castro? Osama bin Laden, I have to give evidence? Give us a sign. (laughs) Give you a sign that it's live? (laughs) You know, uh, Echo Star bought Sling Media today. Does that make you happy? Okay, we check the business pages. I can't believe it. You know, people would say Fidel Castro is dead. Then there was a video. People are like, well, how do you know he's alive? And, he, and Fidel Castro knows people are going to say that. So he tells you about the price of a barrel of oil. and the stock. Ron here do- thinks I would go on the air and pretend to be live. Like Osama bin Laden or Fidel Castro. I would pretend. So he wants confirmation that I'm live. You don't need any confirmation. I give out, listen, I give out the phone number. And when I give it out, I go to a break. And when I come back, The phones are lighting up and people are calling in. If the show was on tape, how would people know to call me? How would they know that now's the time to dial in? They only know it because I gave out the number, for Christ's sake. Jesus. You've got to be kidding me. The dollar hit a new high against the euro today, okay? It was a dollar forty-one. 
Dollar got a new low against the euro today. Dollar forty one. There, you happy? Jesus. Can we talk about the way they uh, treat American football in this country? Uh, I, I finally figured out why those poor bastards in Santa Monica, those those British expatriates, are so miserable because we give soccer no credence at all. We were sitting up at 5 a.m. last night watching Monday Night Football, and they were basically making fun of it. I know they were. I know they were. And what's amazing about that is that, well, first of all, uh, when we were watching Monday Night Football on TV here last night, there were no commercials. You know, they had Monday Night Football. Oh, by the way, Ron, in Las Vegas, okay, here's an example. We're talking about last night's Monday Night Football game between the Tennessee Titans and the New Orleans Saints. Okay, and Tennessee won the game. All right? Jesus. And the game ended about 4.30 a.m. And Gary was in my room next door. He was watching it with me. (laughs) Jesus. So during the game, when they've got commercials or promos or whatever for ESPN, they cut away and they've got the most bizarre time filler. There's a two guys sitting in a very cheap studio that has the acoustics of like home shopping network. You even know it's home shopping network. I'm sure you're not an acoustics fanatic, but home shopping network, they've got like no soundproofing in the studio. So everything echoes, echoes, echoes continuously. That's what this studio was like. So they're sitting at a cheap desk with a big NFL logo on it. And there's a guy who clearly is an ex football player. And sitting next to him is some young British guy in a Ramones hooded sweatshirt. And they're not only discussing the game, but they run out of things to say about the game. I mean, the Titans essentially ran over the Saints last night, and the Saints are going nowhere this year. They're 0-3. Okay, Ron? 0-3, the Saints. 0-1 down. Drew Brees. It ain't happening. And so... uh, When they run out of things to say, they start looking at highlights of other games. But it's Monday night. There are no other games. They're looking at games from Sunday. Games that already happened 36 hours before. Let's take a look at how the Green Bay Packers did yesterday. And the British host is fussing over the name Brett Favre. He's thinking what we all think. By the way, is it politically incorrect to say, Brett, are you dyslexic? Your name is Favre. If you want to say Favre, it's F-A-R-V-E. What do you do? Why didn't anybody ever say that? Play. But yeah, oh yeah, let's take a look at the Cincinnati Bengals yesterday. And they're showing highlights, badly edited highlights of other NFL games that happened a day before. Pretty amazing stuff. But it's just the way they show British rugby and British soccer at 3 a.m. on Fox Sports Dad or ESPN in the States. I mean, they got to keep something on the air to keep the channel up and running so they can run their mail order commercials, their 1 800 commercials, their head on commercials, whatever they're running. Can't you be specific about what you want as gifts or when you expect something romantic? Why can't you tell us? You see that erogenous zone? Start sucking! The Tom Likey Show. Yes, we're on the air. I want 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Calvin to you from London. This is Bryce on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? How's London? London is fantastic. How's the weather? The weather, uh, it rained a bit today, but not too terribly much. It got a little chillier than it had been. When I, the first few days I was here, it was great fall weather. So warm that when I walked around for about an hour, I had to take my coat off. Excellent. That's perfect. That sounds just the way it was when I was there last year. Hey, I had a suggestion. I don't know if you guys are uh, into theater or anything, but uh, they have a, the Shakespeare's Globe Theater. It's an exact replica of uh, the theater Shakespeare, um, you know, wrote for and everything back in the 
whenever he did. And uh, whenever that was, was. Great show. yeah, I don't know when it was, but a uh, long time ago. And uh, it's great theater. And I hear that the shows are amazing. I didn't get to see one when I was there, but uh, so you I didn't slip me a stain. You didn't see it. You don't know anything about it. Well, I took a tour. I went and I took a tour and I got I see. to see it. And uh, you what know, are your two, what are your two favorite? What are your two favorite works of Shakespeare? Well, I. Let's see, I read King Lear and Hamlet uh, when I was in school. Um, those are probably the only two that I've uh So they're your two favorites? Read. Yeah. Right. So you like Shakespeare so much you were never curious enough to read anything else he ever wrote. <laughs> well, uh, those are the then, only two that I can remember. when you got to London, let me review. Uh-huh. When you got to London... Uh-huh. And you took a tour of the Globe Theater. They said, oh, by the way, we've got a show tonight at 730. You said, no, thanks. Well, they were, when I went, uh, it was out of season. They only do it uh, starting in uh, June, I believe, or something like uh-huh. that. And, and they weren't running when I was there. Otherwise, they would have. Otherwise, you would have? Yes. Okay. But uh, and, from and- what I hear, they interact with the audience and everything. And it's supposed to be a pretty they good They interact show. with the audience? Yeah. Oh, they, Ropsy and Shakespeare. I don't want the actors talking to me. I just, <laughs> just, just do the play. Well, they, uh, some of the audience can stand. Uh, some of the seats, I guess, are right what in What is this, the, the second stage. city, the groundlings? What are we talking about here? Yeah. Do they call people up from the audience to, like, perform? Uh they didn't say anything like that, but uh, Improv, they Shakespeare. to the audience, and they uh, they do sword fights in the middle of the audience and stuff like sword that. Sword fights? Yeah. I know Dean's done a few sword fights. <laughs> well, that's what they told me. So. Really? But I thought I'd suggest that for you. It's something to do. Something that okay. I wanted to do and go back there to. All right. To well, uh, many many guys out there suspect that the Brits are into sword fights, and now you've confirmed it. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Gary, let's get down to the Globe Theater and see some sword fights. Uh, speaking of sword fights, I uh, actually walked down the, uh, what I guess considered the gay street in Soho today. Really? Yes. It was, um, it was interesting. I, you know, I should mention that I was watching, because I've, I've been trying to check out everything I can. I was watching a soap opera yesterday, and two guys macked on each other for like a full 10 seconds. Well, i got to tell you something. One thing I, I was so disturbing. No, I'm sorry, but it I'm really was. i got to tell you one yeah. thing I've noticed here. Public displays of affection. Much more common here among everybody. Yeah, but it's it, it's it's cool. Same sex stuff is cool on TV, but you can't you, you know you can't talk about anything at all, even racy on on radio or television. But no, two, but two I guys. I see people grabbing each other in the subways yeah. and stuff. I mean, I I forgot to mention that on the air. I'm glad you brought this up. Yeah. I mean, it really annoys me when chicks. You're with a chick and she's trying to like you know claim ownership. And she may not touch you the rest of the day, but the minute other people are watching, she sticks her tongue down your throat. This is happening in the subways everywhere. I can't believe what I'm saying. Guys hunched up against the wall with chicks sticking their tongue down their throats. They're generally really ugly people, too. Well, that's true. That is true. That, 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 that's why they need public displays of affection, so they can show that somebody is actually attracted to them. You never notice attractive people never do PDAs? It's the fat and fuglies. See? I got somebody. Look at me. <laughs> That's what it is. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Charlie on the Tom Likas show from London, England. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Great, Charlie. Good. Hey, I was just wondering if people are having a hard time figuring out the time difference. Yes. That you, you might want to just help them out Daniel Pearl style and just hold up a copy of the London Times in front oh, of the yes. microphone. Well, I haven't had that right here. This is the and London then, Times. And they'll hold it up and they'll see the there date and they'll know that you're actually you doing it the today. Date. This is it right here. This is, um, this is from uh, Tuesday, September 25th. And uh, there's stories about the uh, Prime Minister, Gordon Brown. He's not going to be holding the election everybody's been waiting for. And uh, they're still talking about the big soccer controversy here with Chelsea and Manchester United the other day. And see, now we know you're current. See, there you go. I'm holding up the paper. Can you see this? I see it, and I oh, that that's today's, and it is. 
It's you're right. Paper. Yes. In case you were wondering. In case people think I'm making this up and we're not actually in London, there you go. That's right. And CNN, none of that is real either. It's all tape delayed and they can't cover the world in real time. Well, you know, my first, you know, I, I'm a member of the Screen Actors Guild. My first gig, I put on the astronaut's uniform and we yep. went out to, yeah, it was out in Palmdale. Uh-huh. And uh, I was out there and I was practicing, you know, they, they had the line, you know, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I, that was me. There, uh, see, it's all fake. Actually, um, I did uh, I did get some pressure from the network. They wanted me to say, Coca-Cola! <laughs> but I resisted. You resisted and went your own way. Yes, I did. Very good. Well, have a great time over there, and don't forget to see some Shakespeare. <laughs> I certainly I have will. a great story about the Globe Theater, if you want to hear it. <laughs> Is that so? Yeah. Um, did you have I a guess, sword fight? Did you have a sword well, fight? Was, the... <laughs> and they, they, thou, they stood up on stage and said, thou needest a suggestion. And we gave them suggestions. And it was it was great. It was great. <laughs> have fun there, my friend. Well, yeah, I can see it is, Charlie, and I thank you for the suggestion. Tom, 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 Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. Come on, that doesn't make you immoral to touch yourself. So now I'm going to have to go touch myself. The Tom Likey Show. Show from London at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. And this is Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey Tom. Hey. How's overseas? How's what? How's overseas? Overseas. Yeah. Well, it's good. I haven't seen any seas, but uh, it's it's great wherever I am. London. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Of course, I lived in London for uh, about six months. Uh, I just wanted to give you a few recommendations. I went to school over there, so. Okay. Okay. Uh, first one would be uh, if you are able to get a hold of a student that is willing to take you up, there's a pub on top of King's College on off the Strand. And I, need to get a student, I need to get a student to take me up there? Yeah, you need a student, you need a student with a valid ID to take you up there. For King's that sounds, College. sounds like too much work. <laughs> Come on, you could do it in uh, two shakes of a lamb tail, you know? <laughs> Is that so? Yeah. Hi, right, Gary, I want you to go out and find a student at King's College and then get him to use his student ID to take us to the pub at the top of King's College. And after we've gone to all that trouble, what oh, man, be... well, I, I'd ship you my ID. I look a lot like Dino, so, you know. It's... All right, <laughs> after, we, after we went to that trouble, what, what would we get when we get to the. How would this pub be so much better than the other pubs? A bunch of drunk British uh, students. Oh, they mostly don't have that in other pubs. Mostly women, too. I mean, not that, not that they're all over, but they're all up there. It's crowded with drug, drunk British girls. How do they look? Oh, very British. <laughs> I don't know. I've like, never been really they going to say they were hot. Oh, yeah. They're, you know, they're British. They're students. They're not, they're, I've always found the British to be a little odd-looking. So Odd-looking. So if I get somebody let to use a student ID to get me and Gary in, I can go see a bunch of drunken, odd-looking women at the pub at King's College. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, okay. I don't know. As far as that, and then uh, there's Co- Covent Garden. There's this uh, big uh, – in the middle of Covent Garden, they have this restaurant. I forget what it's called, but it's really like – Undergroundish looking place that serves the best uh, mincemeat pies and stuff right, like I'm writing that. this down. Forgot what it's called. Covent Garden. Okay. It's Forgot in Covent it's Garden. Called. It's right in the center. Right in the center. Right in the center. And the name yeah. of that, is there a street name or anything? No, it's in Covent Garden. You get right off the tube on Covent Garden stop. You it's take in the a garden. right. You take a it's... right. And then you take the next right after that block. And it's right, right. there on the left hand left side. Taking... Okay. And uh, you don't know the name of it, and nope. you don't, you know, okay, and there's really no street or address or anything. Got it. Okay, good. What else? Uh, Camden Square, if you're into, like, uh, the hippie-ish looking type of scene. I don't think you are, though, so. No, I like to take a weed whacker to that once in a while. 
I mean, it's just it's a bunch. You of know what I mean? There, but but they got a lot. They got a lot of good pubs. Um, up in I lived up in um, I lived up in uh, Russell Square, right across yes. the street from um, the British Museum. There's a hostel called uh, I forget the name of it. I think it's Astor right. Astor's, Astor's Museum then or whatever. It's like. Can I write this down? Forgot the name of it. Okay. <laughs> And um, anyways, there's a bunch of pubs. This is going to be invaluable. I tell you what, we go out there. I'm going to get out of the tube and ask the guy at the information counter. I'm going to say, "Excuse me, there's a restaurant. We don't have the name of it or the location, but they make great mincemeat pie. Where is that?" It's a, well, they make all those you know pastry. It's a, it's just it's like the Sabaros of uh, of England. It's, oh, it's like, like Sabaro. It's like Sabaros of England. You pull up there, and there's this glass counter and. Upstairs, they have this really cool area where you just it's all tap beer. So it's mincemeat pie behind down. a sneeze guard? Is that what you're saying? Uh, what's that? Mincemeat pies behind a sneeze guard? Is that what you're telling me? Yes, yeah, behind the sneeze guard. Okay. Every, restaurant, every restaurant's guy, that's a, it's a good thing, though. Yeah. Fantastic. What else? Uh, that's about it. I, I would recommend staying away from Brixton at all costs. Um, uh, there's, that's about it. That was one of my favorite favorite places to go when I was in London. Stay away from Piccadilly. That's touristy. You don't want to be there. I was already there. Uh, I know you were, but you know, stay away from it. It's it's, it's a hellhole. It's worse well, than it's worse than I, like. I saw lots of hot chicks there. Well, yeah, there's hot chicks everywhere. It's Europe. But this was easy. What's that? They were everywhere. Yeah, well, it's Europe. Come on, can't go wrong. Power. Where you look. Pal. There's, no, there's no fat. There's no fat white Americans over there. I mean, no, there's, there's fat Brits. What are you kidding me? Well, if you're yeah you know, walking in Tesco in the you know sugar aisle, there's fat Brits, but they're on the subway, pal. They're on the subway shoving their tongue down some guy's throat. Oh well, I don't. I don't. I didn't took the subway very often. I was I was a big time walker. I mean, as far as oh, and well, tell Gary to stay away from often. tell Gary to stay away from Soho late at night. I got. I got mugged for about fifty pounds when I was walking through Soho really? at about a, at about two a.m. in the morning. So, did you have a sword fight? No, there was no oh. sword fight involved, man. Yeah, I, it, there was no sword fight. <laughs> I saw I saw a chick. I wish someone stole fifty pounds from her. <laughs> if you know where what I mean. There in Soho. I don't even know where, but uh, thank you. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.